here has been a huge inspiration to me personally. It's, it's now a long time ago I, I first learned to know my, we talked about it this morning. I was one of her coaches she hired on a European project she was creating. And then I was looking for my next personal development, which I've always been doing. And I was looking into May Boo's Facebook, thinking that she would be the next coach I would work with. And one day she announced something that made a change in my life forever. Because it took me on a whole new path into exploring the area of sexuality. My view has impacted the life of thousands and thousands of women. And I would also say thousands and thousands of coaching clients. Because she was once upon a time one of the leading trainers for the Coaches Training Institute. Uh, a company that trained coaches worldwide. And mine was not only one of the first coaches working for CTA, she also took coaching, professional coaching to Asia and to corporations. And she was living her life, she was traveling all over the world in order to do her training with her with the people who wanted to become a coach. And then she also started a new life where she found her path of helping women to be adored, loved and cherished. And I'm so proud and happy and honored to have you here today. Please help me welcome my lady. afternoon. Everything was quiet. The sun was beating down the heat of the day. The cat lied down and slept on the front porch of the beach hut. Even the birds stopped flying and they just stayed together, staying out of the heat and just quiet down for the afternoon. Everything was quiet, except for her. She was kicking and screaming and yelling and punching and crying in the water, slamming out there by herself. No one is watching. She's finally able to cry and yell out, why? Why did this happen to me? I worked so hard at this. I tried so hard in that relationship. What the fuck? Just like Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and thousands of other American women and Swedish women who either wanted to go to Bali or did go to Bali just to run away to try to find the answer to what was happening to their life. That woman was me. I stood there in the middle of that afternoon wondering what the hell happened to my life? Why did I work so hard and try so hard only so that my marriage of 18 years to completely fell apart? Me, 
left behind with a four-year-old daughter. What are we supposed to be doing now? And why isn't anything working? Like Maria said, I was flying around the world, training coaches, doing big things, but my life completely fell apart. What happened? Worse, I was petrified. I was so scared. I was scared whether I'm going to ever find love again. I married a really nice guy, and we worked really hard in this relationship to make it work. But after 18 years, it completely fell apart. We were numb to each other, and we were stalled out. So I had to ask the big question, what am I doing all this for? And is there a better way? And am I going to get myself out of this mess? Does anyone relate to this story at all? Just a little, oh good, I'm in the right place, right? Yeah. This is why I'm so passionate about what I do now. I work with strong, powerful, smart women who do everything, who's capable, and yet when it comes to love, they're not satisfied. They don't have the love that they want. And when it comes to money and success, they keep working harder and harder, investing more and more, and yet they're not seeing the result that they want. Have you ever wondered that question? It's like, how much more of this do you have to do to get there? Yeah, I did too. <laughs> and do you find yourself exhausted? And like, your brain, my brain was, I could see the smoke coming out of it. <laughs> because by that time, I had built four different companies. I have hired international coaches to work for me. I went everywhere, and still, I just felt like I'm just running in one place, going <laughs> So, this is what I get to do now, is I get to help strong, powerful women like me <laughs> to have the love and the money and the success that they want. And this is finally the life worth living for me. And what I find is that my clients come to me because they have tried everything. <laughs> They're really smart, you know, they've tried everything. Like me, like I built four companies by the time I broke down. I have taken tons of workshops to try to save my marriage, to make it better, stronger. Maybe if I just take one more class, that's going to help us understand each other better. Maybe, you know, if we just do one more thing, maybe if we go on vacation, maybe have another child, that would save us. Has anyone have another child to try to save your marriage? That's a bad idea. Don't do that. Luckily, I didn't do that. So I have found some answer, and that's why I flew all the way from California to be here to share with you. There is something that after 20 years of doing this work and working with, like Maria said, clients, thousands of clients, I've put in over 25,000 hours of working one-on-one -on -one with women around the world. And from the, those hours, I discover a few very important, universal, common thing that women do that really wreck our love, our success, and our money. Would you like to find out? Yeah? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so, before I tell you this, I have to warn you that I actually have about six months worth of information that I'm going to cram in in this 20 minutes. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, I want to know more, I have something very special for you because the timing of this, of this event today is so exquisite. So I have a little invitation to invite you to at the end of my talk. Is that okay? All right. So here's a secret that I found out after 20 years of doing this work. 
is that there are three things that women do that really get in the way of our love, money, and success. And the funny part too is that not just women, but women, what I find most common is American women and Swedish women have this in major common with each other. And I find that as I flew over here, I always have a funny thought in my head. I'm like, who am I to be called to Sweden to be of service? You know, like, what do I know? Because I was born in Vietnam. I'm not even American, but I was, because of life circumstances, I end up immigrating to America. And I spent the last 40 years studying American culture from the outsider, and I work with just white American women most of the time. And then about five years ago, Maria was turning 50, and she Skyped me and she said, hey, I'm turning 50 and I want to spend it with my favorite people, and you're one of them. Will you come? And I said, sure. Will you help me pay, pay for the ticket? And she said, yeah, how? And I said, well, can we just put on a workshop so that people can, you know, so I can pay for the, the ticket, the plane ticket? And she goes, yes. So we put on this workshop, which was actually the birth of my signature work. I had this concept inside me, but I haven't tried it out yet. But because of her birthday, I flew over and I said, let's do a workshop in Sweden and see if it resonated. We did it. And the 12 people that was in the class, one of them is here, actually Anna too, right? You were there too. Yeah, so we had, and they loved it. And they said, May, could you please develop it some more and bring it, bring it to us some more. And so Sweden is actually the birthplace of my signature work. So I owe Maria and I owe Swedish woman such love and gratitude for you know, helping me bring this work into the world. And it's so f strange and, and yet so beautiful as I keep learning how to do this and seeing how it fits so well for my Swedish client. So the three things that Swedish women and American women do that really impacted your love life and your money and your success is this. First one is you think you have to be the one who do everything. Yes, anyone feel that way? Yay, ding ding, seeking the right path. You think that you are responsible for everything. Yeah? And so you work really hard at it. And you really want to work hard at it because you love your world so much. And you would have been told that if you just work harder, you'll get what you want. Yes? And I think you even have a cultural code the Yangte code that said, work hard, put your head down, don't be too much, be humble, keep going, don't speak up, don't rock the boat, right? Of course not. When you're a Viking boat, you know, you don't want to rock the boat because you fall over, right? So, so stay still and then keep going and you'll get what you want. And what are you finding out? You're not getting what you want and you're exhausted and you're like, what the fuck? Why am I so tired? So that's number one. And then the second thing is deep down inside, you'll run with this guilt and fear that you're not good enough, that you haven't done enough. Yes? Sound familiar to anyone? Feel free to go, that's me. Let's see, who, who relate to that? That's me, yep, I'm proud, yeah. So you run by guilt. So it doesn't matter how many degrees, how smart you are, how much you work, you just keep feeling like, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. If I just be a little bit better, then they'll like me more, and then he'll date me, or blah, 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 or I'll get the better job, yeah? And yet, all you end up is more work, more exhaustion, and more loneliness, yeah? So this is like the great lie that has been floating around the world, especially, especially in first world countries, to us women 
It's so fascinating. As if that's not enough, the third thing that you do, that just sink everything, is you walk on eggshells trying to please everyone around you. Yeah? You walk on eggshells trying to not upset anybody, trying to make sure that, you know, the neighbor think nicely of you, that if your mom, you know, your mom is happy for you, you know, you try to, so first you try to please, then you run by guilt and, and fear that you're not good enough, and then you're walking on eggshell trying to not upset everything. Yeah? I love your face. God's name. <laughs> and it's exhausting. And deep down inside you're hurt. And the trouble is, the, the, when you know this, what you try to do then is you try to, how do you solve this problem? You solve it by working harder, yes, right? So but that's because that's all you know. And I'm here to tell you that working harder is the worst thing you can do. And I'm gonna tell you this, the answer to, to this situation, and I have to warn you that when you hear the answer, you're gonna say, yeah, but man, you don't understand. So let's just practice that now. Go ahead, put your hand on your hips and go. Yeah, but man, you don't understand. Go ahead. That's right. Come on, you're Swedish. I know you can do even more than that. Yeah, but man, you don't understand. Thank you. That's so great. Yes. The resistant level inside to change this, even though it's so it's so painful, is so great. It's funny. It's painfully funny, actually. So, here's the antidote to this. Okay. The only way out is to let yourself be loved, adored, and cherished. Take a big deep breath. Did she say loved, adored, and cherished? What does that mean? Yeah, anyone thinking that? It's English, I don't understand English really. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, people around, Americans have a hard time understanding what is loved, adored, and cherished. So if this is not an English issue. This is a, a self-worth issue, okay? So who here knows what to be loved means? To be loved, just to be loved, yeah, right? That's easy, I know how to be loved, yeah. And I know for myself, like when I was married to my husband, to my ex-husband, I was loved, he really did love me. He was very loyal, you know, he came home from work on time, he helped me with the baby, and he cooks and cleans with me, and blah, 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 he loved me, and I loved him. But to be adored? And then to be cherished? What is that? Yeah? So, to be adored. Like, can you just turn to your neighbor and say, I adore you. Try it. <laughs> see, look at what happened to them. Did you see them? They just kind of lit up like, really? Wait, did anyone do for you? No? Okay, can somebody do for you? Look, did, no, let's look at him and say, I adore you. Oh, you just blocked it. I can see you. <laughs> Look, he's turning all red. Right? So to be loved is just like, it's safe. It's love. We, we, is that okay? But to be adored, it's like, whoa, did you just say that? Oh my God. Right? And then to be cherished. It's like, oh, what is that? To be cherished. And I looked up the definition of to be cherished. You know what that means? One definition. It means to be worshipped. <gasps> it's like, no way. You know, okay, I, I say that for love. Maybe adoration, but cherished? No way. That's too much. Yeah. So the reason why this is so important is that Oh my gosh, if you're not loved, adored, and cherished, and you keep trying to accomplish everything that you do, 
By hard work, all you do is end up exhausting yourself. I did a little research um, two years ago, and I wrote an article on are the Swedish women in danger of extinction? Is the Swedish woman in danger of extinction? And in that article, I talked about how, you know, in the, in the, the animal kingdom, if the, female, if the female is weak, she can't have babies, she can't take care of the babies, and then the species will die out. That's how a species goes extinguished. And what I've been noticing from my clients that have work, come to work with me is that about 40% of them have, are on antidepressant, some kind of exhaustion, brain exhaustion or physical exhaustion, and that there's a lot of... I was going to say there was a lot of silent suffering, but it's that loud. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not loud, and yet we all suffer inside and pretend like it's all good. Like, hi, you know, I'm May. Jia Victor. Oh, I can't say that word. Nice to meet you, you know, and we pretend like it's all good, but deep inside it's like that loud motorcycle going, ah, I'm dying here. I need help, but I don't know how to ask for it. I need something different than what I'm having. So, does that mean my time is up or does that mean I still have five minutes? I have one minute. Okay, great. <laughs> Perfect. That's all I need. So, what I love, if this message resonates with you and you'd like to learn more on how to be a love the Lord and cherish, I'm actually going to have an event here on October 1st and 2nd. So, oh, a little less than a month from now, right here in this space. Yeah, and I'd love for you to come. It's two days, Saturday and Sunday, and I'm gonna spell out exactly the roadmap, what you've done that got you here, and how to undo this pattern so that you can let yourself be loved, adored, and cherished. And usually, I charge 950 Swedish krona for it, but today, since we're here and you're on the guest of Maria, I'd like to offer you a very great special. Is that okay? Yes. So, if you sign up today only, then it's 750 Swedish krona. So you save 250. This includes lunches, by the way, Saturday and Sunday lunch. If you sign up by yourself, it's 750. But if you want to bring a friend with you, then two tickets for a thousand. So it would be just 500 each. Does that sound like a great gift? Yes. yes. So I would love to have you at my event on August 1st and 2nd so that we can really help you undo this so that you can have the love and the money and the success that you really want. Okay? So during break, um, Annika, my darling Annika, uh, had volunteered to be here to help me and she will help um, register you if you like. Okay? Over there, yeah. Talk. Oh. Thank you, Ellen. Any questions or comments or remarks? I have time for that. Yes, thank you for the image of the Viking boat. Oh, yes. That you are fixed to this Viking boat. And if you try to go outside the boat, it will rock. Because my experience is that I love the sharing outside my relationship, not inside my relationship. And if I want to uh, give this gift to other person, they get very suspicious to me. And that's maybe the way we, we don't share it ourselves. So that's why I, I have this resistance from other women that it's not possible to get out of the Viking boat. But I think it's possible to get outside the Viking boat. Thank you for the image. It's very clear. Yay! Yeah, thank you so much. It explains things to me. Yes.
about um, if how do you do in order to receive so that you feel worthy of receiving I find that it's much easier to give and give and give but I've noticed in the past one year that my issue is in receiving and because um, I'm some kind of blocking myself from yeah. receiving yeah um, the answer to your question actually does take about two days to explain because I can explain I can explain it to you which I will right now I can answer that but you won't really get much change but if you want some change then it will take about two days then you're gonna go oh that's how it's done okay so basically it's because of you have low self-worth you think that you're not good enough deep it down inside and so then then you're ashamed and you're blocking it and, and then you don't see the world as a safe place. You see them like the way you think in your head. So you see them as criticizing you, but they're not. They're trying to love you. And that's the problem with most women, is that we are dying to be loved. But when somebody tries to love us, we will run the other way. We will find ways to resist it. We will find ways to fight it. We will find ways to deny ourselves. You know, uh, on so many ways, you know, we're like, oh, I don't have the money to come. Oh, I don't have the time to come. Oh, no, no that's okay. I got it. I can do this myself. Oh, no, don't, don't look at me. I'm in pain right now, so just don't talk to me right now. So there's so many ways that we will block it um, from receiving it. So that's the brief answer, but, you know, you probably know that. And it's how. How do you undo that? That's why it takes me about two days to do that. I'll come. Yay! I would love to thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good. Any other questions? Thank you. Yay! Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yes. It's, it's wonderful to hear. I was taking a selfie with you guys. My speaking, right? It's very inspirational. And I'm going to continue in Swedish now. Ett annat ord för att inte känna sig god nog, det är feeling like a fraud. Och jag minns en gång för många, många år sedan när jag var doktorand på sociologen i UMI. 